Good evening. Our introit there was played by Jonathan Kingston um, on the Willis organ in St Mary and St Giles Church in Stony Stratford. Um, and um, the piece is the Fugue in C by the composer Dietrich Buxtehude, also known as the Gigue Fugue because it is dance-like, like a Gigue. Welcome then to our evening prayers for Saturday the 4th of November. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. I waited patiently upon you, O Lord. You stooped to me and heard my cry. You put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. For our psalm tonight, I turn to the lectionary and have chosen the first eight verses of Psalm 63. O God, you are my God, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips when I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings, I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In our Old Testament readings at present, the electionary gives us options, and I think we've been making different choices, um, some from Nehemiah, um, some from Lamentations. I don't know Lamentations well, but um, I've chosen that tonight because it seems very contemporary. <clears throat> this is Lamentations chapter 5, verses 1 to 22. Remember, O Lord, what has befallen us. Look and see our disgrace. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our homes to aliens. We have become orphans, fatherless. Our mothers are like widows. We must pay for the water we drink. The wood we get must be bought. With a yoke on our necks, we are hard driven. We are weary. We are given no rest. We have made a pact with Egypt and Assyria to get enough bread. Our ancestors sinned. They are no more. And we bear their iniquities. Slaves rule over us. There is no one to deliver us from their hand. We get our bread at the peril of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness. Our skin is black as an oven from the scorching heat of famine. Women are raped in Zion. Virgins in the towns of Judah. Princes are hung up by their hands. No respect is shown to the elders. Young men are compelled to grind. And boys stagger under loads of wood. The old men have left the city gate. The young men their music. The joy of our hearts has ceased. Our dancing has been turned to mourning. 
the crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us, for we have sinned. Because of this, our hearts are sick. Because of these things, our eyes have grown dim. Because of Mount Zion, which lies desolate, jackals prowl over it. But you, O Lord, reign for ever. Your throne endures to all generations. Why have you forgotten us completely? Why have you forsaken us these many days? Restore us to yourself, O Lord, that we may be restored. Renew our days as of old, unless you have utterly rejected us and are angry with us beyond measure. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We we'll turn to a short gospel reading from Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet, I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, excuse me. I have only a few words to offer tonight because as so often scripture speaks for us and hymns speak for us so much more powerfully than whatever I might say. Tonight that powerful, painful passage from Lamentations it was an abrupt gear shift wasn't it from the psalm um, of reassurance and joy found in God that we, we heard first. It reminds us that every mood is every upswing and downswing of history and human experience is to be found in the Bible. Here the context of Lamentations is the lament of the Jews at the destruction of Jerusalem 600 years or so before Jesus taught in its precincts in the reconstructed temple there. This is Israel and Judah at their, the very bottom of this, this cycle. And yet it seemed to speak to our current moment in that self same part of the world. We know that there are, there are two peoples who feel that terrible sense of violence and oppression and desecration um, at the moment and our hearts bleed for the situation there. We feel something of that desolation. We feel some desperation at the little we're able to do to see it come to a halt, to work for peace in that region. And we feel a measure of heartbreak um, for those we see suffering on our television screens. Nothing, of course, to what those present 
about those who know people in the region are currently feeling. And we feel heartbreak for people we do not know. And at the same time, of course, some of us feel heartbreak for people we do know in our own lives. This week I, I learned for the second time this year of the death of a friend at suicide. Bleak things answered in the Bible. And yet, and yet, we cannot succumb to all that is bleak. We can hear the lament that the joy of our hearts has ceased, our dancing has been turned to mourning. Yet we must locate our hope in those other passages of scripture, in those other signs of life. We must endeavour to keep the dance going. And so we read joyfully in the gospel of how tiny seeds, tiny seeds being planted, can flourish into a great tree which will nourish the birds in its branches. And we continue with our own lives, rightly and properly, rejoicing where we may. Um, fresh home from our church's bonfire party, where we kept the dance going, where we were joyful to see a large group of children of all ages. Um, and where we enjoyed sparklers and played musical chairs and musical bumps and did disco dancing. And then I come home to try and scramble something together um, at one end of the room while the dancing continued at the other end as my family caught up with Strictly Come Dancing. So the dance goes on. So let's hear a response to those darker, bleaker thoughts um, in the words of a hymn. Uh, this is the, one of William Cowper's hymns. William Cowper, who of course is closely associated with our region, great hymn writer, contemporary friend, collaborator of John Newton in Oney and um, in Northamptonshire and in, in, on Buckinghamshire, I'm never quite sure, round about there. Um, and uh, of course, um, the Cowper Memorial Church is one of our URC congregations in the East Midlands. And this is one of William Cowper's great hymns, um, set to a modern tune, um, echoing in some respects the, the images of hope that we heard in that initial psalm. Um, you may hear um, that wonderful image we sometimes have of God as a, as a, as a mother hen, as a, as a bird who shelters us in his wings. Um, Cowper says... Uh, in in, in the, the psalm, of course, we uh, the words were, um, "In the shadow of your wings, I sing for joy." Here is Cowper's hymn about how hope may break through, how Christian hope may be kept alive. Sometimes a light surprises the Christian while she sings. It is the Lord who rises with healing in His wings. When comforts are declining, He grants the soul again a season of clear shining to cheer it after rain. Let's hear that hymn sung for us um, here um, by Young Voices of the Master Choir in the Heritage Baptist Church um, and in the setting um, by Craig Courtney, although you will find the words at 595 in our hymn book, Rejoice and Sing, um, and very shortly in the comments.
So then let us sympathise and mourn, where it is right to sympathise and mourn. Let us rejoice and keep on dancing where it is proper to rejoice and to dance, bringing all our moods and our prayers of thanksgiving, rejoicing, sorrow and pleading to God in our regular time of prayer. For while in him confiding, I cannot but rejoice. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for surrounding us as daylight fades with the brightness of the evening light. And we pray that as you enfold us with the radiance of your glory, so you would shine into our hearts with the brightness of your Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, O God, that we who are baptised into the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, may continually die to sin and be buried with him, that through the grave and gate of death we may pass to our joyful resurrection for his sake, who died and was buried and rose again for us. Your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, sovereign God, Lord of hosts, hidden in the mystery of light, ceaselessly adored by countless holy angels. At creation the holy ones sang for joy. The universe is filled with the messengers of your glory. The mysterious powers marvelled to see you create a new people. The rebellious powers could not penetrate the secret wisdom of Calvary. The fearsome enemies of life were disarmed and led captive at the cross. The hosts in glory watched the world's deceiver fall from heaven. With joy the angels welcome each returning sinner and guard the path of all who trust you. Awesome in judgment, unlimited in mercy. Blessed are you, sovereign God, enthroned in light. Amen. And in our prayer of intercession, if you'd like to join in, then when I say, Father of mercy, respond with me, hear our prayer. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father, Father of mercy, hear our prayer. You guide your church in the way of truth. Stir up among us the gifts of your grace. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. Holy wisdom fills the whole of creation. By your spirit renew the face of the earth. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. We are the temples of the Spirit. Confirm our lives in the service of the Gospel. Lord, this Saturday evening, we particularly pray for those who serve the Gospel in the city of Milton Keynes, of our URC ministers, elders and members there, and also of all their ecumenical partners. And tonight, let us also add prayer for the congregation of Kapa Memorial Church in Oni. And for all who profess the gospel, Father of mercy, hear our prayer. Your anointing restores wholeness to our broken world. Give healing to the sick, freedom to captives, and hope to the dying. Lord, we pray wholeheartedly for a peaceful resolution to the situation in the occupied Palestinian territories in Israel and Gaza. 
and we pray also for all those we know to be in need of your light and healing ourselves. Praying especially for the Reverend Caroline Andrews, for the Reverend Wakefield Carr as she recovers from cancer surgery and faces ongoing treatment, for the Reverend Hamish Temple, for Jean Schenk and for the Reverend Brian Schenk in his care and concern for her, for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery, for Moynia's parish priest, Father Andy, for Janet Clarkson as she recovers from her stroke, with Grace and Basil, for three-year-old Ikari, still building back her strength after three surgeries, with Tom, for David, recovering from cancer surgery, and for his wife Susan, with Tom too, for his sister-in-law Deborah, in hospital after suffering a fall while changing planes at an airport. With Onkatea for Madeleine on her courageous journey to recovery. With the Reverend Claire and Reverend Brian Davison for their daughter Susie. For Cheryl and for Prince and the family in their ongoing care for her. With Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him. For John and for Irene as she continues to look after him. And with Alison for Joy Rice, recovering from knee surgery. And for Alison herself, that she may soon recover from her current illness. And in a moment of silence, we each of us name others that we know to be in need at this time. For all of these, Father of mercy, hear our prayer. Nothing in all creation can separate us from your love. Receive into your keeping those who have departed this life and give comfort to those they leave behind. Tonight we pray particularly for those who grieve for Norma Bradshaw, widow of the Reverend Tony Bradshaw, as well as the members of her family and our church at Wellingborough. We pray for those who grieve for the Reverend Cecil Macaulay, especially Pat, his wife. Those who grieve for Alex Harrow, for the congregation at St Andrew's Chesterfield and all who will miss him there. Those who grieve for Don Buxton, especially the Reverend Maureen Buxton. Those who grieve for the Reverend Keith Birchall. And those who grieve for the Reverend Leo Osborne, especially Charlotte. And may I add those who grieve for my friend Richard. For all who grieve the passing of loved ones. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. As we rejoice in the power of the Spirit, may God grant us today the faith of the apostles, the boldness of the prophets and the strength of the martyrs. Father of mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Let's conclude our words of worship by saying together 
the words of the Lord's Prayer, please do join in using whichever version you prefer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, the, the, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Oh, I'm sure the Lord will forgive me getting his prayer wrong just at the end there. Just as I am sure he charges us to keep the dance going, even in times of trouble. And so let's end tonight with dance music. This is a brass piece called Balkan Dances played here by the University of Nottingham Brass Band.
brings us some cheer as the day ends. And so the Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen. Good night, everyone.